In today's lesson of Great Expectations, we're going to look at chapters 12 and 13 of volume 2. Chapter 12 is kind of an interesting chapter. In this chapter, Pip and Herbert go to a play of a production of Hamlet, and Joe has already told us that Mr. Wopsle has retired from the church or left the church, and he's moved to London to become an actor. And Joe gave Pip a playbill of the production of Hamlet that Mr. Wopsle is performing in. And so they go to the theater. Suffice it to say that the production is really lousy and Mr. Wopsle's acting is lousy and the entire thing was actually awful. And the crowd, the audience is kind of, you know, making fun of them and the whole thing is just, ugh, yeah. And Mr. Wem, or I mean, sorry, um, uh, Wopsle doesn't even realize that he's a bad actor. So, I mean, Pip and, and Herbert show him um, kindness. They invite him over for dinner. They visit for a long time. And so nothing too eventful happens there. But, I mean, it does sort of beg the question about, um, you know, profession. Should you do something you're good at or should you do something you enjoy? We could, you know, talk about that if we were all together. In uh, chapter 13, Pip is excited to hear that Estella's going to be coming to London tomorrow, wait, in two days, and he will be able to see her. She, he's uh, Pip is supposed to meet her, and he's going to help her get around the city. So Pip cannot wait when the day comes that she's supposed to be there. But to pass the time, he follows along with Wemmick, who's going to go to Newgate Prison to visit some of the clients. And Pip hasn't really been inside inside the prison, but one of the things he talks about is how, you know, in, at this time, the prison system was really bad. This is kind of Dickens, right, saying, um, at that time, jails were much neglected and a period of exaggerated reaction consequent on all public wrongdoing, and which is always its heaviest and longest punishment, was still far up. So felons were not lodged and fed better than soldiers to say nothing of paupers. So I think that Dickens is wanting to get at, you know, how good should a prison system treat its clients? And I, of course, think, or maybe he's thinking or suggesting that it certainly shouldn't treat them better than the system treats soldiers or the tr system treats poor people. Maybe that's what we would like to point out. So one of the things interesting is that when Wemmick walks among the prisoners, he's walking as though he's a gardener among his plants. And and Pip will keep referring to this metaphor, how he'll, you know, walk through his greenhouse and he'll look at his, you know, flower or his shoot or whatever. So it's kind of another thing. Again, Wemmick with his post office in an immovable state, more references to that. So we see that he's very popular. People are wanting to give him things and right, they're trying to get, you know, in his good books so that they can get to um, Jaggers. And he knows everyone. I'm on page 238, by the way. Um, I just wanted to point this out. So he comes up to some of them. It says, in one or two instances, there was a difficulty respecting the raising of fees. And then Mr. Wemmick, backing as far as possible from the insufficient money produced, said, it's no use, my boy. I'm only a subordinate. I can't take it. Don't go in that way with a subordinate. If you are unable to make up your quantum, my boy, you had better address yourself to a principal. There are plenty of principles in the profession, you know, and what is not worth the while of one may be worth the while of another. That's my recommendation to you, speaking as a subordinate. What this is telling us is that some prisoners can't afford the fee that Jaggers charges. But they're like, well, can you help me out? What can you do? Can you help me? And, and Wemmick says, I can't do anything. This is the deal. Some principals or lawyers cost more than others. If you can't afford that lawyer, get a different lawyer. So we talked about, you know, the justice system and how um, equitable is it? Well, I don't know. If you can afford the expensive lawyer, but this guy can't, right? Uh, so we carry on here. We meet this other man who is a colonel that is actually going to be executed. And he really wants to give Wemmick something. He doesn't really have anything. And so Wemmick says, you have pigeons. Do you want to give me your pigeons? 
And then uh, more information about um, Jaggers that were kind of, you know, the way that he's treated and revered and, and, and um, feared. And Wemmick keeps saying, they don't mind what they ask of me, the subordinate, but you'll never catch them asking any questions of the principal. And he keeps saying this because bugging he's there he goes again. I told you so. Ask another question of the subordinate. Wow. So anyway, we find out that. But then um, at the end of that, uh, Pip is going to go and see if the coach has arrived with Estella. And he is feeling contaminated. At the end of the chapter, I beat the prison dust off my feet as I sauntered to and fro. And I shook it out of my dress and I exhaled its air from my lungs. So contaminated did I feel, etc. So, you know, even the way that Jaggers feels so contaminated every time he's in court or around the clients, kind of the way. But, you know, that juxtaposition between, you know, criminal uh, criminality, crime, and then you know, this romance thing and whatever. At the end of the chapter, actually, he says, what was that nameless shadow, which again, in that one instant had passed? There are, I don't know if I pointed it out, but earlier too, there's these different scenes where it's almost like there's some kind of phantom that Pip sees. And it's like when Estella's there and it's very bizarre. He's like, I think that I see something that looks familiar. And, you know, is it um, just like a deja vu or is there like a ghost? This is something that's going to play out that we'll talk about more. All right. Over and out.